Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar we'll run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days this doesn't look too bad in terms of temperatures with some areas seeing potentially 20 degrees today and tomorrow with temperatures slowly reducing uh, and lowering towards the weekend but precipitation could be an issue for some we've got a weather front pushing in from the northwest starting uh, in parts of northern ireland and western scotland and parts of western ireland within the next 24 hours most likely sort of wednesday evening this sort of uh, system starts to arrive and it will only make very slow progress south and eastwards so we don't have that precipitation it won't be too bad, but it will move through, bringing thicker cloud and heavy rain for some towards the uh, and clearing towards the end of the working week in towards Saturday time. We'll then have a look at the GFS, GM, Eastern WF and the Ensembles, looking at the mid to longer range. As we have alluded to in the last few videos, it is looking like September is going to finish very chilly and unsettled. Big low pressure systems pushing in from the north, giving us some very unsettled, windy, rainy sort of conditions, but below average upper air temperatures. So some quite chilly daytime temperatures that feel like temperatures are going to be cold and whenever we do see some uh, clearer skies uh, and precipitation stopping and shower activity stopping we could see some quite harsh frosts potentially for this early in the season at least again nothing ridiculous but quite a few areas could get close towards freezing with these sort of upper air temperatures um, and conditions we could be seeing towards the last 10 days of september it's all because we've got ex-hurricanes and tropical systems pushing out into the Atlantic, bringing big amplification in the jet stream. Um, and it means we're going to be seeing a lot of diving lows and a lot of oscillating um, systems. And it does look likely the jet stream could be pushed southwards by a bit of blocking towards the start of October. And that could send us chilly, below average, not amazingly cold, but it could be very unsettled with the track of the low pressure systems much more, more further southwards than they tend to be this time of giving more widespread precipitation so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so do start on the live radar you can see once again it is a pretty dry day a few patches of precipitation across the midlands into sheffield and nottingham and perhaps across scotland and parts of northern ireland but again it's just some precipitation within the thicker cloud generally though it is very dry and i'm recording this around half two in the afternoon and we put on those temperatures it's not too bad today widely mid to high teens warm day and it could be warm once again tomorrow in the south and the east uh, quite widely perhaps could see 20 to 22 degrees so some late summer early autumn warmth but as i said it's all going to change um properly change quite persistent chilly colder than average weather coming in towards the weekend and start of next week but for the time being the next day or two doesn't look too bad with temperatures still getting into around that 20 degree range quite nice indeed so if we go over to the UKV and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, from to this afternoon you can see a few patchy showers here or there but nothing too much and through this evening maybe some more patchy showers pushing into the west but once again nothing too crazy. Weather fronts start to build in the west though by tomorrow afternoon. Heavier precipitation pushing perhaps into western Scotland and parts of Republic of Ireland but the heaviest precipitation still is out in the North Atlantic. You can see though it is still widely dry across most of England and Wales, Northern Ireland and quite a bit of Scotland and the Republic of Ireland as well. So in those areas still in a warmish air mass with some sunshine poking through could still be uh, pretty decent with temperatures perhaps peaking around that low 20s mark. But you see through Wednesday evening the weather front approaches giving us widespread heavy precipitation through the evening into Thursday afternoon slowly progressing southwards and eastwards and you can see it lingers through most of Thursday through the Midlands, Northwest England for eventually reaching the southeast through early hours of Friday and persisting through most of Friday in southern and eastern and getting a bit of an injection of some precipitation there from the channel so yeah quite a miserable day through Friday in the south and east but behind that to the north and the west it is looking drier at least less persistent rain but there will be plenty of showers but more sunshine as well so it's a cooler drier uh, more uh, sort of arctic like air mass not amazingly cold the coldest conditions are going to be coming in later um, into the weekend start of next week but chillier air mass arriving and eventually we are all into that chillier air mass by saturday that precipitation taking very long to clear there even saturday afternoon could linger in essex east anglia and kent for eventually turning drier into sunday and you look at those upper air temperatures 
you can see that it is uh, initially warm ahead of, of the weather front, but behind it, it does turn chillier down towards freezing at 850 HPA before clearing through. But it's likely as we head into early next week, it could get even colder, maybe minus two, minus three, minus four straight from the Arctic. Again, that's not particularly low. That's sort of almost average upper air temperatures in uh, sort of January, February time. But because it's so early in the season and we're coming off such a warm, hot summer, it is going to feel really quite chilly out there in comparison. And the one thing we have to keep an eye on is the dew points. Well, that just tells you how cold the air mass is. is uh, are. You can see widely sort of loads, maybe mid-teens in these warmer air masses ahead of the weather front. But once that weather front passes through, down to sort of mid to low single digits, and it could be even colder to the start of next week week and of course we can't have a look at the wind speeds at the moment uh, because it's important looking at when it's actually chilly but those wind gusts will be up providing quite a big wind chill if you look at the max temperatures though you can see today temperatures widely in the mid to high teens perhaps peaking around 20 degrees in a few spots tonight those temperatures won't drop too low maybe down towards the high single digits where clear skies are but elsewhere, sort of mid-teens to low-teens. Tomorrow afternoon, as I said, could be widely quite warm, especially in the south and east, maybe widely 18, 19, 20 degrees, maybe in the United States, 21 degrees here or there. And as we head through to Wednesday evening, won't be too bad once again, maybe high uh, single digits in a few isolated areas in the south, but widely mid to low-teens with a lot of cloud around and still that humid, warmish air mass around. By Thursday afternoon, we could start to see a split further north and westwards. That precipitation is pushing in, maybe mid teens, maybe low teens in a few areas, but to the south and the east of it, still 20 or 21 degrees. And by Friday, eventually, the coolest conditions are in the south and the east, only 13 to 15 degrees there, really quite chilly with that precipitation uh, behind it, though, could reach 18 or 19 degrees. And by Saturday, uh, early morning, you see we're all in the cooler air mass, so widely clearer skies further north and westwards mid to high single digits and by saturday afternoon you can see again a lot chillier highs around 18 19 degrees but widely mid to low teens with those peak temperatures really in central southern and western england where we see uh, that uh, we have slightly milder air mass and uh, more sunshine as well and um, for early hours of sunday you can see quite chilly indeed and again we're not even in that much of a colder air mass yeah it's below average but it's not a good few degrees co uh, warmer than what it's going to be come next week so we've even got we've got an even colder air mass incoming so wouldn't be surprised if many areas next week saw overnight temperatures touching those low single digits if not getting towards that freezing point really quite chilly indeed so if you go over to the gfs and have a look at the uh, sorry the press charts are showing for today uh see what was going to be happening if you just zoom out there so if you do move through you see high pressure in control at the moment low pressure to squeeze in over the next few days before eventually high pressure built in towards the weekend but look at this big amplification in the jet stream high pressure sending itself towards greenland Big ripple and we see a northerly wind plunging towards the UK under quite deep areas of low pressure. So quite unsettled, very showery, could be persistent bouts of rain within this, but very chilly, cold air mass spreading through. And you can see eventually in the longer range towards the end of September and start of October, we've got blocking to our north over towards Scandinavia and the jet stream is shifted southwards. And look at these storm systems, big low pressure systems much further southwards than they have been recently, where the centre of the lows have been towards Greenland and Iceland, they're hundreds of miles further southwards towards the UK. It could be very stormy and unsettled there in the longer term, and chilly as well, being on the, uh, on the north side of the jet. If you do move it back and have a look at the potential equivalent temperature, this gives us a better way of viewing the air mass. You can see towards the weekend we have a chillier air mass in, that's why we could still see some frost. But look at that plunging to some deeper blue, so much colder air mass pushes in for early next week. And we linger in those cooler air masses as well. Yes, we see some westerly flows at times, bringing some briefly milder air masses, but we are generally on the, uh, on the northern side of the jet stream. So we've more into those blues and all these yellows that generally could give us temperatures in the high teens low 20s pushed well to our south and look at that real intense low there and if we do run it back and have a look at the raw 850 hpa temperatures you can see not too bad at the moment slightly cool air mass pushing through towards the weekend but just wait for this plunging into those greens and potentially the minus five line for scotland really quite cold potential uh, look at the temperature deviation really chilly plunge of blues eight degrees below average potentially in a few spots really chilly 
indeed pushing through and we just linger in these yellows and greens where those temperatures are around or below average for the foreseeable future and we just stay generally in cooler air masses and even when we do see milder air masses it's because we're getting pushed in with a weather front so yeah it could be temporary around or above average in terms of upper air temperatures but on the surface it won't feel good at all because we've got heavy precipitation associated with that so whenever we do see slightly milder air masses it's associated with a weather front so a lot of cloud and rain so those temperatures will be dropping considerably if you compare it to the gm see what that is going with today high pressure in control low pressure gets squeezed through and then we see that low plunging out of the arctic very chilly and we just see low pressure sat over the top of us a southerly tracking jet stream big amplification and you see low pressure just sitting over us with a blip blocking towards greenland and iceland this would be a very snowy, unsettled scenario in the middle of winter, but being early autumn, it's going to be a very chilly, cool, miserable sort of pattern with still quite a bit of humid air around. So the precipitation is going to be heavy and extensive, but it's still cooler than average. So it's going to feel quite chilly with temperatures probably in the low teens there for daytime highs. Uh, look at the temperature deviation. You can see we are consistently in the blues. I'm running it back there. You can see as soon as that northerly wind comes in, we are consistently in the blues all the way to the end of September. Not nice at all. And the raw precipitation chart for that zero grass firm moves in. And we generally stay in that cooler air mass for the foreseeable future. So, yeah, really not nice at all. If you have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, the high pressure moves away, squeezing this low through, and eventually, uh, eventually we see that northerly wind starting to arrive. Look at that, plunged into that real cold air mass. And eventually it does get cut off a little bit in the high pressure. It doesn't go blocking towards Greenland, but sits more to our west, pulling in more of a northerly or easterly flow. This would be more settled, less precipitation. Very interesting that the other two runs very much have, high, uh, have low pressure sat over the top of us. Perhaps this ECMWF run is a bit of an anomaly. We'll have a look at the ensembles in a minute. But it is still chilly, below average of the temperature deviation still in those blues and the raw 850 hpa temperatures you can see we are still towards that freezing point at 850 hpa so quite chilly in the, indeed still seeing that northerly plunge but just developing beyond that slightly differently so all three runs got this real cold northerly wind coming in early next week monday to wednesday time uh, really quite chilly with the zero degree as for moving through for most areas potentially getting down to sort of minus five in scotland so really cold wouldn't be surprised to be seeing some wintriness over the hills and the mountains uh could be seeing some overnight frost as well and it generally looks very unsettled after that apart from the eastern wf but all three runs are looking chilly and generally unsettled i do think this ECMWF eastern wf that builds in higher pressure is an anomaly at this stage so if you do now have a look at the ensembles you can see generally from the gfs ensembles today like yesterday it is very chilly in the short medium and longer range temperatures are generally around or below average all the way to the start of october pretty decent precipitation moving in perhaps within the next few days by sort of thursday friday time probably friday more likely for the south and east big precipitation pushing you can see that there are some spikes appearing and just continuing all the way through not majorly unsettled because a lot of the precipitation falling will be convection based uh, especially when we have the northerly wind um Apart from initial weather front, it will be mostly convection based, so it is the ensembles are not going to pick up on it too well. But it generally looks well below average, really quite chilly and unsettled, really quite miserable. Put on those two meter temperatures as well, you can see that temperatures struggling at all the mid teens, maybe even low teens at times in the south and the east, where generally we are warmest this time of year, being closer to the still warm continent. So areas further northwards will struggle even more. Overnight temperatures could fall away a lot more than this is showing, just because this again, uh, this is not high resolution from these ensemble members, so they don't always pick up on the sort of localised temperatures too well. If you also have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see generally it is lower pressure, and that's why I'm surprised the ECMWF run built in that higher pressure system but yeah we are generally lower pressure um and so yeah unsettled and quite miserable and cold if we look at the ecmwf ensembles again you generally see it is around or below average quite considerably for the next couple of weeks a lot of precipitation around as well so very unsettled chilly upper air temperatures likely a lot of the time between zero and five degrees below average really really quite chilly um and again have a look at those two meter temperatures and again 
really chilly around that sort of mid to low teens point uh, and again this is skewed a little bit by warmer outliers as well that could be overstating those temperatures and again high resolution most likely yeah low to mid teens could be the high temperature for a number of days next week into the following weekend really not nice at all look at the sea level pressure you can see the eastern day operation run there is an anomaly you can look there at the 30th it is the second highest uh, in terms of pressure, most are 10 to 20 millibars lower. So yeah, much more likely to be lower pressure. And I did think that the ECMWF operation run was an outlier, and you can see there it is in terms of building that higher pressure in. Others in the longer term do get higher pressure building back in, but the majority of us under lower pressure for a good three to five days there at least. So yeah, really not looking too good. Very unsettled, chilly as well to end the month and start October potentially. Again, there is still a lot of uncertainty around. It can change, for this, especially the start of October. But for the time being, not looking too great. If you've got any outdoor plans, not only is it going to be chilly and cold, most likely we're going to see a lot of showers and bands of precipitation around as well. But again, we can't pinpoint those really until it comes within the five-day time frame. So still got to wait a few more days until we start to see what uh, that precipitation does look like for when this unsettled and cold weather does truly arrive. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.